Many insects are aquatic for at least part of their life. For example, the primitive dragonflies and damselflies have larvae that are hunters along the pond's bottom. And as adults, they cruise atop the surface of the pond, hunting down other insects. Now these fast and agile hunters are hard to catch, but not impossible. Aha! The hunter can be hunted. While dragonflies and damselflies can be found along the coast, there are only a few species that can use brackish water. Most species need fresh water for the nymphal stages, so they are never too far from a pond, stream, or swamp. Their bright colors and beautiful patterns and active flight at low altitudes make them very visible insects. They don't sting, bite, spit, or use foul language, and they eat bad insects, so even grandmothers love them. Damselflies and dragonflies have strong flight muscles and spend much of their day on the wing. And while at rest, the males are always ready to scramble into action, to drive off another male, or to chase down a female. They can hover, but rarely spend more than a few microseconds in one spot. These powerful wings make for highly maneuverable aerial ability, which enables capturing their prey in mid-air. They also allow long-distance migrations. The height and speed of flight patterns is characteristic of each species or family. The most outstanding character of the order is the outrageous eye. About 30,000 facets, all at slightly different angles, make up the eye. Strong mouthparts impart a swift and deadly bite to their prey. These sleek flying machines capture other insects in midair using spiny legs held like a basket. You know, we all gotta eat. Pizza or flies, food is in the eye of the beholder. Some don't like the wings, some don't like the crust. Head, thorax, and abdomen. Now to tell the girls from the boys, just look at the tip of the abdomen. Don't let the Cersei confuse you, but the female has the ovipositor here, while the male genitalia is definitely a lot more gothic. Strangely, the male has to transfer the sperm from the tip of the abdomen to the second abdominal segment. He then has to grab the tip of the female's abdomen, which obviously takes a good aim. Within this male organ is a special device that scoops out any sperm from a previous encounter. It's called the sperm removal tool. Honey, where have we going at night? Not that it matters. There's a lot of competition for mates. So damselflies and dragonflies have evolved a behavior that helps reduce the stress of the mating game. The male grabs the female just behind her head. Now they're in tandem. Kinky, but true. And this prevents the other guys from hitting on his girl. These schmucks keep trying to get their two cents in but our guy hangs on as she walks underwater. Now this looks like some Greek tragedy where the lovers drown themselves but she's actually going underwater to lay her eggs on this aquatic plant. He holds on as long as he can, but there he goes, and now off for some R&R. &R.
Now after laying her eggs, she too comes to the surface and floats off into the sunset. Bizarre, but very romantic. Other species lay their eggs right into the water while flying in tandem. Getting too close to the shore can be dangerous, as this spider goes for the double or nothing. Some species just drop their eggs from quite a height right into the water. One can actually find the nymphs that live in the mud and sand of ponds and streams. These carnivorous beasts lurk under the water. Out of water, they still look scary and monster-like. Man, that's a nightmare waiting to happen. Dragonfly nymphs have their gills in their rectum. Imagine your lungs up your rear end. On the other hand, damselflies are more refined and have their gills dangling from their abdomen, which also help propel them through the water. The nymphs are well camouflaged on the bottom of a pond or stream, but out of water they look like well, like they need to be back in the water. This jaw-like apparatus thrusts out to snatch its food. To other species, it's known as the shovel of death. Well, that's one less mosquito. They are such voracious predators, they even attack their own. When they are attacked themselves, the reaction is quick. The nymphs escape by forcefully flushing water out of their rectum, thus providing jet propulsion. Blowing it out your ass can save your life. When it's time to molt, they climb onto a rock or stem and metamorphosize into the adult. Biologists have to raise the nymphs into adults in order to identify them, which, of course, gives a whole new meaning to being a nymphomaniac. Now, if you wanted to catch a dragonfly 250 million years ago, a net wouldn't have helped very much. But this would have. Now, the giant dragonflies of prehistoric times were humongous, and their wingspan measured almost a yard long. And you know, that would have made for a great hunting season. Ooh. You know, there's nothing like a little dragonfly on the barbie. But, seriously speaking, in some parts of the world, people do eat dragonflies. But you got to be careful not to eat them raw, because some contain trematode fluke parasites. There's great seasonality of populations, even here in the tropics. For example, as the dry season progresses in the northwest part of Costa Rica, much of the standing water evaporates. What's a poor dragonfly to do? Well, some just get the hell out of there and head where the grass is greener, and there's more water. Over to the Atlantic slope, no small distance. While there are many theories on the origin of the name dragonfly, the most likely comes from the Romanian folktale about St. George's horse. You undoubtedly remember him more for his dragon-killing skills than for his horsemanship. 
Well, the devil, who probably kept the dragon as a pet, turned St. George's horse into a giant flying insect. Moral of the story, don't mess with the devil's stuff. To tell dragonflies from damselflies, first look to the head. Dragonflies have their eyes close together, while damselflies have them spaced far apart. Damselflies have four and hind wings that look the same and they hold them over their backs. At least in most families. Dragonflies have four and hind wings of different shapes and they hold them open. In Costa Rica there are five families of dragonflies and nine families of damselflies. The families can be told apart by wing venation and sometimes by habitat and color. One problem of identification is when they emerge from the nymph, they are a much drabber color than the adults. Another is that in many species, the females look different than the males. Distinctions between gender and species are all about body paint, wing venation, and eye spots. It's also important to study the genitalia. Thank you.